In addition to classifying matter itself, we can also classify the properties of matter into two categories, physical and chemical. So what do we mean exactly by the properties of matter? Well, let's take a look at the physical properties. These are ones that we can observe without altering the identity of the substance itself. So the matter doesn't change. We can observe it without changing the matter itself. And those would be things like color or the temperature or perhaps the melting point or the freezing point. So, well, those are the same, but the boiling point as well. Those are all things that would be physical properties where we could measure them without changing the fundamental identity of the matter itself. However, there are some properties that when we measure them, it changes the identity of the matter itself. So an example here is a match burning. These, these would be referred to as chemical properties. These define how a substance will react. And when we measure them, it destroys or changes or alters the substance itself in its fundamental ident identity. So if we take a match, we can look at it and talk about its color as a physical property without changing it at all. But if I measure its flammability, when I do so, it then uh, burns the match, which then converts wood and some phosphorus into primarily CO2 and water from reaction with oxygen in the air. And this changes the fundamental identity. The match is no longer uh, a match once you've measured its flammability. Another one might be the ignition temperature for a liquid like gasoline. You can measure it, but in the process of measuring it, you've changed the substance. And so fundamentally, chemical properties describe how a substance will react. In addition to properties, we can also talk about changes of matter. And those we also classify into physical and chemical changes. A physical change is something where the matter changes appearance, but not its fundamental identity. The best and, and primary example of physical changes are phase changes. So if we boil water, for example, we go from liquid water to gas, gaseous water, but the fundamental identity is still water molecules, whether it's in the liquid form or in the gas form. We've simply changed phase. Additionally, if we melt ice, uh, that would be another phase change, but the fundamental, uh, the fundamental property, the fundamental molecule has not changed. Alternatively, a chemical change is where a substance is transformed into a different substance. Here, the key is that the identity changes. So an example is if we take hydrogen gas, so this is just a molecule that's got two hydrogen atoms of just one single element, and oxygen gas, if we mix those together, and add a little heat, we will burn, have a very uh, strong reaction and you will generate water molecules. Here we fundamentally changed the identity. We went from one substance, uh, hydrogen, or and then another substance, oxygen, so we had a mixture, and then we end up with water molecules, completely different. So that's one distinction for physical and chemical changes. Let's talk a little bit more about chemical changes and how we distinguish them. There are some signs that are useful to look at as indicators that a chemical reaction may have occurred. Now, these ones that I'm about to go through, they don't always indicate by themselves that a chemical reaction has occurred, but they indicate that a chemical reaction may have occurred. We may have to look closely, and especially if we have multiple of these signs, often these are helpful in, in identifying that a chemical reaction has occurred. So one of these is just a simple change in temperature. If I mix two things together and I get a change in temperature, that may be an indication that we have a chemical reaction. It's not definitive proof that there is one, but it may be a sign. Or if light is given off, uh, for example, striking a match, you see light given off, that may be an indication that a chemical reaction has occurred and hence a chemical change. Or if a gas is formed, if you take baking soda and pour vinegar onto it, you will get gas formation. That's an indication that you may have a chemical reaction. Or color change, change in odor additionally, or if you have an explosion, that's generally a strong indication that you had a, a chemical reaction occurring. Or 
if you have a solution and then a solid forms out of that solution, that's known as a precipitate. Those are common examples of signs of a chemical reaction. Now, they're not definitive necessarily in and of themselves, and we have to look carefully at them. For example, uh, a gas forming, number three. If you open a bottle of soda pop, you'll notice gas bubbles forming. Now, that's because there's dissolved gas in the soda liquid. That's not a chemical reaction occurring. That's simply uh, the gas coming out of solution. It's more of a more of a physical change. Or, but if you take baking soda and pour vinegar on it, then you do get a lot of gas formation, and that is actually indicative of a chemical reaction occurring in that case. And there are other cases like that as well. Um, but let's go through an example of a chemical reaction and see how these signs might help us. We, we won't see all of them in one place generally, but often we'll see more than one. So if you take a copper penny, and your textbook has a really nice example uh, with, a, with kind of an engaging story of what happens. Uh, but if you take a copper penny and, and put nitric acid to, on it, add nitric acid to it, now let's just see what has occurred. Well, if you held that test tube in your hand, you would notice that there was a change in temperature, that it got hot. And that would be indicative, perhaps, of a chemical reaction occurring. But let's see if there's any other ones. There's no light given off. But there is actually a gas formed. This orange material up here, that's actually a gas that is formed above the penny. So that's indicative, certainly, uh, of a chemical reaction, since we didn't start with anything that would have had gas present. A color change did occur as well. We went from this brown penny to now this kind of blue solution. And that's indicative that we might have a chemical uh, reaction occurring. I wouldn't recommend smelling this reaction, but you might notice a change in odor. Uh, that would also indicate. And we do not have an explosion or a precipitate forming, but we have multiple examples here of our signs. And so we certainly have a chemical reaction occurring here. And as we progress in the later chapters of this book, we'll be able to describe that chemical reaction in more detail.